Hello and welcome to Game of Dota 2. You're watching Star Ladder Star Series. It is season 8 still. It is day 19 of 30 days, so we're getting closer and closer. We're gonna see Rock's Kiss. They'll play from the Dire side, and they're up against Flipside playing from the Radiant side in game 2 of 4 today. And we have a first round ban for the Husker, which is interesting. My co caster mod probably will have some thoughts on that one. Yeah, that's... I, uh, I don't know about that one. I've not really seen him in Captain's mode all that often. I mean, he just got in here, obviously, and really doesn't bring that much. I mean, he used to be good when you can, like, of course, go for Ghost Scepter and, and do the man mode build where you just jump on people and then Ghost Scepter just throw spears and things like that. But I don't know if that's the best uh, best ban. Anyways, it's good to be here between Rock's Kiss and, of course, Flipside Tactics. I gotta say, I'm a big fan of uh, Afterlife's Avatar, which is a Targaryen symbol from Game of Thrones. I don't know if you watched that show, but... That's pretty legit, so... I read all the books and then I, at season 2 I stopped watching it because it went too far away from the book. I like the books way well, more, anyways. It didn't go that far away from the I just, book. I, I didn't lose that. I, I lost interest, so... Like, Alright, that's a better there. excuse. That's a better excuse. Well, 2014! I think December 2014 is when the next book's coming out, right? Uh... Okay. Is it? I, I don't think so. I was hoping for Maybe. Actually, yeah, that's probably right. That's probably right. There were or, there are already some Ten chapters out, remaining. so that's nice. I already read all of those. But okay, kudos to his Five avatar, which someone made up to look like what it would look like, would have looked like in the book. Oh well. Radiant Wasn't team. True. Anyways, let's take a look at who's, what the scores are. Wow, this break has really not done my English very much good. Well, Rock's Kiss. They ha are doing actually really well. They've only got two losses, which is the lowest amount of losses that is that is uh, known. Like, see, which is just not not working out. But the, the lowest amount of losses yeah, that it. one could help have. Nine games played, seven wins, two losses, twenty-one points. So they are still looking strong to make it to the top four. On the other side, there's a person that only has or team that only has two wins, and the only reason they have two wins is because they got them for free from Espera and 4FC dropping from Star Ladder. So they haven't actually win, won a single game yet physically in Star Ladder, and they're of course still looking for it. Perhaps they will find it up against Rock's Kiss, but it is not an easy opponent to try that against. Ten seconds no, certainly not. Um, Rock's Kiss is a very dominant team. They've played very well in the past couple of weeks. They're, they're doing okay here, clearly, as you can see. Um, and honestly, this Flipside Tactics roster, we didn't really know much about them when they came out. And I know many people from the Flipside organization. I'm friends with a couple of them, you know, and I really like working with them and doing shows and stuff and working with them. But, you know, this roster, it kind of leaves me with like a question mark because I don't really know where they're from. I don't know a whole lot about them. I don't know if they're popular Russian players. I don't know if they're pub stars. I really don't know. You know, w with NA Dota people, I can, you know, kind of you say, okay, I know this player. I know that player. They've played here. They've played there. But with like a Russian squad that we don't really know anything think about it's kind of like well what do they bring to the table right now they have a good draft at least going for them they have two supports picked up but that means that the rest of the draft is going to be pretty pretty easy for Roxas to ban out however they're just going to go with a slark and a doom ban which is i guess okay the luna is picked up for flip side tactics and this is an okay lineup so far but then you go up against rox kiss and we've seen this so often with the pugna and a nature's prophet those two heroes are very aggressive and they like being aggressive like we saw with the retry earlier on this afternoon so um i think with the heroes that Roxkis has, they're going to be all about the aggressive play. Lich will try to deny as much experience as possible, try to get more experience for, you know, maybe Luna. Crystal Man's a good aggressive support, but I just think that against these heroes, it's going to be tough for Flipside to take this game. Yeah, it, like on paper, regardless, and on heroes, I mean, they're trying their best, to, like having the Lich right there to maybe slow Roxkis's lineup down. But by picking up the Lich, they also are kind of helping Roxkis, of course, with the. Uh, already removing one of their own creeps, so pushing is going to be easier, if you think of it that way. Rock's Kiss, they have used that Pugna in different kind of uh, ways. We've seen him played by BZ on the safe lane before. I'm expecting it to, ha have it to happen again, to be having him just uh, maybe solo. It does need to be solo, though, but uh, maybe duo. I Like, yeah. Rock's Kiss, <laughs> their push is uh, going to be outshining that of Flipside, even though they already have got that Luna there. But Pugna... And now Venomancer as well, this is... Radiant team I don't think that Goblike is planning to make this a very long game. No, this is all about the short, you know, just get it done. Much yeah. like the retry did earlier on. Spoiler alert, sorry everybody. But um, 
I think that with Rock's Kiss right now, they have a lineup that is just all about early game aggression and pushing. And even without, you know, the pushing tactics, they still have a strong early game lineup. Just with Nether Blast alone, Decrep Nether Blast can probably bring Crystal Main down to like a quarter life if it's leveled up Nether Blast. So it, you've, you've got to be careful with these two squishy supports. I think Pugna can absolutely obliterate them. Venomancer can do some damage with his playboards as well. So this is not the type of lineup Flipside wants to have against this type of early game aggression. They would need something like an Elder Titan. And they go for another squishy here in Weaver. And both of these heroes require farm. This is too late of a draft, I feel like. This draft is not going Flipside's way, I, I feel like. No, they need that, that last pick for them. They need to have so much emphasis on that solo mid player, on the solo mid rotations, on... That solo mid hero to be able to snowball and hold Roxkis off, it's gonna be very tough because which heroes are still in? Of course there's still Storm Spirit, but he also needs to get to level 6 and he's fairly easy to shut down. Ten seconds Maybe Queen of Pain, but also that, I mean, it's like they need something that can really Five dominate. And OD is still in the pool and I wouldn't be surprised to see them picking that up, but OD also needs a lot of farm. But at least it's a hero that will normally guarantee you the lane win. I don't know, it's uh, it's... It's going to be a very difficult uh, decision for them to make. Roxkiss, even if now, indeed, Flipside has a strong mid lane hero, there will be living armors to help Ten out the mid lane. As Rox apparently goes for all green, and Flipside mm -hmm. goes for all Five blue, purplish. I was going to talk about the color coordinated drafting, but you got to it first. Yep. Either way, though, you talk about strong mid laners, and the problem with that is, is you're facing up against a Pugna and Nether Ward, which. Yeah does a significant amount of damage to people who cast spells like a storm spirit so that would not be like that's where it really comes to be a problem same with weaver and just spamming shikuchi like pugna ward is going to do work in that regard um they ban the od so that the opposing team rocks because can't pick it up i i'm interested to see if they both pick up a green and blue hero with the last pick i'm actually kind of excited but um, you know, so far the the draft really does favor Rocks because they go for the Tram Protector, which is kind of gross to think about. Yeah. I mean, that's even more early game, not necessarily pressure, but survivability that they really to give that to Pugna and like any sort of issues he has with you know being squishy, he kind of just that that goes away to a certain extent. Obviously, Tram Protector requires a bit of levels now because of course the Living Armor is not necessarily as useful as it was, but still, uh, it's still a gross draft coming out from Rocks case. I mean, like. The pushing power, the fighting power, it's it's there, and oh boy, it's going to be interesting. Yeah, luckily for Flipside, they still have um, full minute and then some in their bonus time. I'm expecting them to need it because remaining. it's just such a difficult decision. I'm actually thinking perhaps a Beastmaster wouldn't be too bad. Remaining. Very sturdy hero, and he's able to, to counter push, and he has a level 6 Zero ulti time. that allows your team to get kills on a regular basis. Otherwise, yep. perhaps a Magnus wouldn't be too bad, because of course also he is going to be able to, with his level 6, create things, and if there is going to be a push, you have a chance to to fight at least, but it's all kind of... It's all too passive, they need something... that They kind of lock themselves into needing something that can be very aggressive, that is going to guarantee that 10 to 25 minute mark to be in the hands of that hero. Not just the, no, not the team, but the hero. The hero needs to have such a dominant presence on the map that Rock's case is gonna be afraid to push in. Unless he's dead. There's no way they're gonna be afraid to push in, even if they have that dominant presence. And I think that there's no hero on the map, unless they, like, whatever they pick up here, it, it might help, but I just feel like they just got not necessarily severely outdrafted, because that tree and protector, I feel like, might have been a mistake for Rock's case, but still. I think they did get outdrafted going for the Weaver and yeah. Luna against an early game lineup, and, and it's just... Uh, the Clockwork is one that can have that early game presence, but yeah. the, the problem is that you're fighting into heroes that can be all around the map. They can also just do a lot of damage. I mean, if... if and, and that's another thing, a blink out of the, the cogs, and already, I mean, that Queen of Pain is going to have a very strong matchup if that Clockwork is mid, so... This yep. is, a, I think, a very good draft for Rock's Kiss, and on the other side, I'm not really too happy about Flipside's draft in, in all honesty, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, we'll see how that clockwork can do in the mid lane, most likely indeed. I mean, I I find it too passive. I think that clockwork, he's indeed able to, with level 6, he can hookshot and he can make things happen, but he can't do it by himself, and I'm not sure if the Weaver or the yeah, Luna are going to be having a big enough impact. And actually, perhaps they want to put the Weaver or the Luna mid, uh, in that case the Weaver probably, and have the clockwork on the offlane, in which case that level 6 on the clockwork is going to be quite delayed. And That's what they're doing. Yeah, in which case, I mean, 
Clockwork is then not going to be able to hold off Roxkiss at level 6. Because by that time, Roxkiss will have a pretty substantial lead already, and a Weaver just needs a lot more than just a farm that he gets in the first 10 minutes. It's not necessarily about his items, it's about getting Shikuchi leveled up quickly, but the problem with that is, like I said before, you're facing up against a, a Pugna, so Nether yeah. Blast is a thing in the Nether Wars as well. Um, it's not like he's getting that much damage, though, from the level up of Shikuchi and even Gemnet attack to a certain extent, so this is... To me, a questionable decision. I wasn't a big fan of seeing Weaver mid in the first place, and to see it with this lineup is even more questionable because he's not a mid hero. You already mentioned that he needs farm. He really does, but they're not going to give him, like, room. They will gank the Weaver. I mean, just because you have Shikuji doesn't mean that you're going to stay alive the entire time. I mean, Sprout is a thing. Um, you have a nature prophet who can TP, and it'll be tough, I think, to gank him because they don't have any real lockdown. So that is something to keep in mind. Is that that's really the only problem for Rocks because they have like no real lockdown whatsoever. Yeah. But they do have damage. They have early game aggression and pushing pot potential. So Rockskiss's draft is all about just fighting early on, and they have the ability to do so in the mid lane. It is going to be that Pugna though, and you're going to see the Queen of Pain top in a, a solo safe lane scenario. And, and Sedoi is actually going to go in the jungle, which is very strange. I haven't seen a jungle nature prophet in who knows how long. So. We'll see how this does go. Yeah, let's take a look at who is uh, playing what exactly while we indeed also discover who is laning where. And Light will take on the Luna for flip side. They'll be on the Radiant side. And he'll, of course, be the one that uh, will take the farm. Sheasley will support him in that, playing as a Crystal Maiden as we all oh, got this tree. is going to hurt if he gets himself. <laughs> yeah, it really is. A tree with double damage. That's like the most ruthless th thing that there is at level 1. It's... Look at his damage! He is already doing 126 damage, I believe, if I can count that properly. Actually, there's way more. Never mind that. 60, it's like 160, yeah, 60. Yeah, you're right. I don't know why I said 190. God, neither of us can do math. That's nope. all right. <laughs> well, we have got Afterlife. He's playing the Clockwork. He'll be on the off lane. Uh, the stand in A will take on the Weaver. And then last but not least, it is going to be... I believe this is ZXZ playing the Lich as a stand in here as well. And on the side of Rock's Kiss, down in the bottom lane, looks like there's going to be a little action. The right clicks are coming out, and Light, he is probably going to go dead. down to first blood. Yeah, I think. Boom. Yep, there Bunch. it goes. Go Black will take that one on this tree. Yeah. That is Go Black, like you mentioned, on the tree and protector. Yo will be on the Venomancer. Heading over to the mid lane, you'll see Scandal up on the Pugna, that farming mid lane Pugna. In the jungle, it's going to be Sedoi on the Nature's Prophet, and then to round it all out in the top lane, we're going to have BZZ. It is perfect on the Queen of Pain. Taking a bit of damage doesn't matter, though. He's got seven tangles left. Now six, he just needs the next one. So uh, he will take some harass and actually a lot of damage going both ways here in this top lane. Yeah, I was going to say, Afterlife is also uh, taking quite a bit of harassment here. He does have still a lot of tangos for himself as well, which is good. But of course, neither of these have a way to dodge the harass coming in from the others. So we'll see who gets out ahead. So far, I think it should be going the way of BZZ. In terms of last hit, it is also going his way for now. But already we see Clockwork pulling uh, the wave back. So he should also be getting solid experience, which is the main reason for him to be here. Get that level 6 up and help his team out. In the meantime, Yol, with the haste run, finds himself a Crystal Maiden. Eats a Tango. So he's already trying to make sure that he can catch up with Sheasley if he tries to run, but... Oh, he's just getting chased out by the Lich. Maybe that Haste with Living Armor is going to allow him to stay around. There's no creep to deny Sheasley. Sheasley should go down. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet teleporting in. They want to try and take this Lich as well. The Lich Seed is there, and that's going to be a double kill for Sido, who just came in and had a typical Nature's Prophet contribution to a fight. Like you know how good stuff. that was for Sidoy? That was like the best thing to possibly happen to him because he had like no mana. He's got no regen whatsoever for his mana. He does have to go back home, but like he just had enough mana to TP in the jungle after like having no mana to do anything else. And he got a double kill out of it, which means his Midas is going to be done like ridiculously fast yes. now. That's, that's amazing. That's the best thing that could ever happen for him. That's, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of disgusting slightly. We have Scandal having a bit of a... Uh trouble with the harassment. He's out of regen right now. As we do have this Weaver doing fairly okay. 14 to 3. You'll have, of course, issues with Scandal constantly blasting him, but as you can see, Scandal is the one to get harassed way more. And actually, oh, Living Armor is going to keep Scandal up. Looks like he still wants to go for it, though, but not with that Living Armor for now. 14 to 3 compared to Scandal. 17 to 6. So Scandal is ahead in last hits, but the kill potential in the hands of the Weaver, for sure. Yeah, Scandal is very squishy. Uh, I mean, he has one point in Nether Ward, which he might put up just in case, but I don't know if he wants to waste the mana. Nether Blast, if he hits it, can do some damage, but A is, I think, going to be very careful about this um, with Shikuchi available, so it's going to be tough to lock him down. 
and really do the Nether Blast damage to him. So yeah, Weaver should have an okay time here, but the last hits are going for Scandal with Nether Blast, as you can clearly see. He is Bottle Crown currently. So he is winning this lane, albeit a little bit. He actually does have seven denies, so somehow Scandal's really on top of his game in this matchup. Double damage rune is top. You can see Weaver should Shikuchi to it and grab it quickly. Yeah, this is... I do like the Weaver because he does have very good rune control, uh, much like a Queen of Pain would or even a Puck to a certain extent. Scandal's getting chased right now with a double damage. She is, I think, in a lot of trouble here. Yeah, oh. Living Armor comes out and it might be enough, but this Weaver is really just looking to get a kill and in comes Tidori though, he's gonna try to do something- Oh my god, he is just dropping like a rock right now! Luckily, the tower is still standing there, otherwise that might have been a double kill Weaver. Doesn't get the courier, was close to getting the courier, he actually comes back for it, and he still has a double damage rune up, so he might still try to make something happen. He knows also that the courier is still around there somewhere, but doesn't want to give up more last hits, so he'll go back to the middle of the lane, middle of the middle lane. Sido is extraordinarily fortunate, because if he had died there, that's his might as time yeah. and gone down the drain, so... That's the no. double kill uh, kind of nullified. Yep. Yep, exactly. I mean, do we have a trial lane complete? I mean, the Lich is of course still around here. Lich and Crystal Maiden, also two heroes that could do something in the jungle, as we just saw, but after that double kill, they kind of feel afraid to move out of the lane again. And, I mean, I understand that, that's fair enough. But it does kind of hurt Enlight, most of all, because he is not getting as much experience as he otherwise would have gotten. And in the meantime, Yul and the tree and protector. I mean, it is, by the way, the tree that's taken the farm here on this bottom lane. So it is uh, it's a carry tree and protector. But in a way, it's just two supports that otherwise would be trying to take care of the jungle. But since there's an H Prophet there, oh, Crystal Main, realizing she was in trouble, teleporting home after getting galed and locked in by wards. But I, I really like these lanes coming out from Rock's Kiss. Really yeah, great. I do as well. I do as well. We talked in the last game about how it, how nice it is to have a jungler that gives you that extra experience, and, and opposed to a tri lane, it's a lot, it's a lot more efficient to use the term that is used often. But uh, with the tree and protector farming, he'll probably go for something like an early mech or something that's more of a support item. I don't expect to see him going for that hard right click that we used to see, like a radiance or whatever, mm -hmm. which I think Loda did a couple of times. I don't see that happening with this tram protector. He's just going to go for some sort of, you know, support role. You can yeah. see mid, there's actually a support roaming through. That's Sheasley, who had to TP back, or walk back in, excuse me, as he TP'd home when he got killed, like you mentioned. Midas is probably done for Cedo. In fact, he's got his recipe in, and it's at, done at 6.30, and that could have been a bit faster had he not TP'd mid, he just stayed in the jungle. That's fine. I mean, it, no one else is getting a Midas in that timing. I mean, in Mud's not even close to one. He it looks like he's not going for one at this point, and he probably should. Um... A is not going for one currently. He he's got a bit of gold and he's not gonna be purchasing up anything. And up at the top lane, Afterlife is sitting on only fifteen last hits. So Queen of Pain is doing significantly better in this top lane right now. BZZ is level six, as you can clearly see. Clockwork is uh level trying to click on him. Level six now, yeah, so he's he's still losing a bit of experience, however. But as, as far as this game goes, there's three kills going for Rox Kiss, and Rox Kiss is a significant early game team. And if the rating can kind of last, you know, throughout the early to mid game. They'll be okay, but the way this is going, I expect Rock's Kiss to start putting out pressure, and, and that's going to happen with Scandal down in the bottom lane now. Yeah, let the pushing begin. And Nature's Prophet can teleport in if he wants to. He's got his level 3 on the Nature's Call, so that will help them out as well. They're, it's not really needed, though. Not with these blasts coming out from the Pugna. They would be uh, giving enough uh, pushing potential to not need an Nature's Prophet. Actually, they might be needing the Nature's Prophet because Afterlife teleporting in, he's got his mana full, he's got a hookshot ready, and he might be looking for a fight. There's four Dyer's heroes now on flip side on this bottom attack. lane, while only three on the side of Rock's Kiss, but they should be aware. Yeah, they, they know, because they, they, they don't see him top. I mean, they don't see him top. Oh. They gotta know he's somewhere. Oh, no. No, Afterlife, no. Well, that was an illusion. Maybe they can still get the Crystal Main though. There might be a Frostbite coming out and losing Beam as well. Yo, he's in some trouble, but Living Armor will keep him up. In comes a Sonic Wave. That burns out the Lich. They look for more Sheasley. He is not going to make it out. Nature's Prophet with the double kill, or with a single kill, I guess. That's the second kill, I mean. Yo, will maybe still die? Time lapse? Yeah, that's going to still be Shikushi from A taking down that Venomance. So in the meantime, the rest is chasing down Clockwork as well as Enlight, but they were able to take down the Nature's Prophet, and Queen of Pain was not able to uh, do anything else there. She was forced to blink away out of mana. She might actually still die. Living Armor again from G coming in. Starts punching up on the Weaver. He does have mana for Shikushi. will be forced to use it as well. They were able to get the tower in the end, and they got a couple of kills, but in the end, it turns out to be a two versus two in terms of kills, even after that horrific hookshot from the Clockwork.
Horrific is the right term for that because that fight goes drastically different if he hits the hook shot. That's unfortunate. That's a good bait of the illusion, however, but yeah. still, you got to know. I mean, that flare it, realize that it's taking a lot of damage from the flare. I don't Double know. Just, damage. I feel like he should have known that was an illusion. Either way, it's a fight that goes okay for flip side tactics, but at the same time, they lose that tier one tower, which is less than desirable. Uh, Queen of Pain almost died. She did live. She tried to. She didn't have any mana to blink away, like you mentioned. She tried to tw tread switch. Unfortunately, it didn't give her enough mana either way. Um, it, w with that fight, though, Weaver surviving and getting a kill or two is, is never a bad thing. So, um, you know, not super bad for flip side. However, I mean, this is still. It's going to be a lot of this coming in through the next couple of minutes with Roxas trying to push down tier one towers. Yeah, I mean, they haven't hit their stride just yet. They are just uh, just in the waters. Is how it feels. Just seeing what they could do. What. Uh, what kind of response they get from Flipside, how ready they are to fight, as we actually have Crystal Main very ready. Never mind, she was just not ready anymore. Had a double damage rune, but just wore off. Looks like we're gonna see still the... Well, the, well, two people going bottom. Scandal actually as well. I'm kind of surprised because there's no tower anymore. And of course he could take some farm there, but for example, that mid lane is now completely empty. It is gonna be Goblack that still goes for the mechanism, so as expected, he still goes for a bit of a support item here. No Radiance tree. Sorry, people. But uh, as expected, I'd say, for sure. In the meantime, on the top lane, BZZ might be in some trouble. There is a time lapse on the Weaver. He will be using it. Living Armor keeps BZZ up. Still around the tower, and BZZ is just going to let him go. He has got a Sonic Wave, though, and I think that if that Weaver would have dove a little bit more, then he would die, but he is careful enough. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he's not going to make any misplays, I think, in this scenario. And there's nobody really here to help PZZ out as well. Uh, who is going full Nurkid, by the way? He does have the two rope of the Magi, so that's going to be, of course, the start of Oblivion staffs going that direction. And that's a build that we see very often. Um, it started last year, pretty much, I think, Korok was the one to kind of pioneer it, or at least help pioneer the build. So it's a very strong build for Queen of Pain to start out with, and I do like it, but it's going to take some time to get there. Uh, it will be helped out if they get more Tier 1 Towers, like we mentioned, and we keep talking about down in the bottom lane, you mentioned, of course, the mech coming up for the Tree Protector. That's not really surprising there. They have these uh, wards for the Dire that are really spotting things out. You can see how low they are, of course, in comparison to the lane. Top lane, it looks like A might actually be in trouble here. Uh, yeah. He's yeah, got to be very see, careful. He wanted to throw out the Sonic Wave, but he didn't want to risk it. In comes another Scream. They know he's there. They just don't know where exactly. There comes another time lapse, but he's already too low. He is going to die if there's a Sonic Wave from BCC. Just needs to know where he is. And he is hiding, teleporting out. Very juke. nice juke coming out from uh, from A. Yeah, I mean, he jukes down, pretending to go through them and down into, like, maybe over here or over here somewhere. Yeah. Instead, he just goes up and he just TPs out smartly. So, not a, like, he didn't panic. He knew he could just TP out if necessary. He took some damage, but that could have been a lot worse for him. Instead, you know, they kind of just waste some time. Uh, looking for him and he'll get out so with that you look at the graphs right now it should be a little bit of a lead coming for the dire team rocks case it's a 5,000 gold lead which is actually pretty significant and a 2,000 experience lead as well um and i don't know what you could do on flip side tactics to really get back into this you really need to start farming with your luna and her last hits aren't bad but 41 you need a lot more and she doesn't have a midas or anything so um it's going to take some time yeah, maybe it's gonna be taking a kill here on the top lane. They're trying to chase down the Venomancer, but he's just gonna teleport himself out. Same thing that Afterlife tries, and he's actually gonna be successful. Yeah, he's fine. I was never worried. In the meantime, Weaver still chasing down BZZ, but BZZ, he will not die. He still has a blink as well. He's actually going for the Orchid, which is a great item. We'll be able to just, uh, this, well, then a Weaver wouldn't be able to get away from him like we saw earlier. Yeah. That's a huge item for Queen of Pain to have against that Weaver. It's like probably one of the most core items again against this kind of lineup, just because of how good it is, at, you know, shutting the Weaver down in terms of Shikuchi and time lapse. So that'll be really great to have when you finish it up. Uh, he has one of Living Staff already, so the second one's going to be coming soon, and then after that second one's done, it's just the recipe from there. Scandal's doing work on this mid tier one tower. He's also just trying to push them back. You can see it's three th 334 health right now. Counter warding coming up from Sheezley. He knows there's a ward there, so it's a smart counter ward. That's a ward that you don't see too often so it's a good thing they did counter ward that uh, they just knew they had some sort of vision there and that's why they backed off as you can see rock kisses back at their own tier one tower up at the top lane cdoy has been farming up like a storm his four staff is done um he's getting dope a little bit by a but i like the four staff up against a clockwork that is a core item in the scenario to get out of those cogs usually you'd see something like a necro book come out but you need the four staffs on these heroes first and foremost so that's a very smart item for cdoy i have to point out that i find this venom are very ambitious he really is. <laughs> he really is. He wants this roach. 
And it might take him like five to ten minutes just to do this on his own. He'll probably get help soon. Yeah, uh, but he'll is, get it done. Like without a, without a without a medallion even. Oh, yeah. flare well, comes in. They'll scout it out. What's up. Yeah. Oh, Good he's shot. hoping. Wow. Afterlife. He's in here by himself. He gets killed. He's trying to teleport himself out, but he won't be able to. In comes the overgrowth to stop it. The blast coming out. That should be Afterlife dying in the meantime. Enlight dies on the bottom lane where BCZ was able to Sonic Wave that Luna to death. That means that this Roshan, even though it started out so slow, this should now be taken by Roxkiss, even if it might take some time. Like, there why do you no do that? Why do you hook that? You, I mean, I guess you know it's happening, but you have to, like, think that, that something's gonna be there, like, another hero's gonna be there to, like, help you out. Like, yeah. the, and he just tries to TP out, like, that's not going to work. That's too aggressive. That's a foolish endeavor. Like, I understand you want to, like, try to make a play or something, but that is just silly and not necessary. On the other side, they got a solo kill on the Luna, which is even better for Roxkiss, and now this game is decisively in their hands, because that Luna stopped farming. The only help I think that really Flipside has is the Weaver playing effectively and, and getting farmed, but that's probably going to be a tough task for just the Weaver alone, so... I don't know, this game is now decisively in Roxkiss's favor. Yeah, and I mean, they weren't even, a flip set wasn't even able to get the tier 1 tower in return for that Roche kill. They tried, but I think that if maybe Weaver went for the tower rather than chasing down on the Venomancer, then maybe they would have had it, but didn't end up working out. We only have two towers down over the, uh, the entire map, which is not really all that much, considering there's quite a bit pushing power coming out from Rock's Kiss, and actually also from... Uh, from flip side Radiance top tower is under but with the two towers down with the five kills going the way brox because they are so far ahead oh that is weaver showing himself the orchid of bc paying off but with a double damage rune still able to harass bc quite a lot he's forced back into base but it is the weaver that dies first and in the meantime the rest of his team has just taken down the last tier one tower on the side of flip side because that pushing power is of course still there scandal cedo and yol showing no mercy here on the top lane he was not expecting that 15 minute door, dude. I could tell that he was just sitting there. He's like, well, I'm dead. Yep. Scandal in the top lane. They're oh, getting chased down. Shot. Poison Nova still comes out. Four step forward. Scandal. Living Armor will keep him up, and this probably will keep Afterlife in place. They still get the Venomancer, but with the Poison Nova ticking down, the Blast coming out as well. They're going to turn this around. They're going to already have two kills. In comes Enlight with the Eclipse, and the Eclipse. Oh, that Creep Wave coming in, tanking up a lot of that damage that was meant for Cedo in the end. A three on two favorable for Rock's Kiss. Well, they weren't actually there with their entire team up until now. I mentioned the in the draft Nether Blast against the Squishy Sports. I'm yep. just gonna pat myself in the back on that one. I mean, come on now. I mean, it happened. That's you just can't run into uh, a pugna like that because that's gonna happen. Although I do admire the Luna's play. She knew that the Eclipse was available and there was a lot of heroes to tank up that damage. The Creep Wave did come in at the end. Uh, unfortunately, it also did BZZ, so allowing them to grab the kill on the Luna. They get the tier 1 tower top, they get a couple of kills as well because of that pug. Now there's a gem of true set up now on the uh, the Venomancer, so if there's a Queen of Pain and a Venomancer together, that Weaver's dead, uh, like 100%. Um, not even a question about it, so... This game is... I mean, the gold graph is dropping even further, it's... It's not quite the game that we saw earlier, but still. It's not going really well for Seth. No, oh, and you could, like wonder how they're gonna get back because of course I mean the longer the game goes you'd think that it would be in favor of, of Luna and Weaver because they are getting more farm or should be getting more farm but they're not really getting that much and on top of that they're now sitting with the two of them on the bottom lane so they'll have to share the farm coming out in this lane as we have got also a rotation coming from Roxkiss there is a tree and protector as well as BZZ here with this orchid with this sonic wave everything up and even though they might not get a kill right now they do force those two cores back towards the tier 2 tower not able to do anything and they they are having just so much issues right now and there's there's nobody that can make it better apart from Rock's Kiss and the only reason that Rock's Kiss can make it better if is they if they throw so you know that's not something that they're gonna do really voluntarily yeah you're absolutely right they, they have a commanding lead they're they're they've got dominant map control and they're looking for towers now this is the first time in a while that they've tried to group up and push a tower as five and you know this is their window this is their timing they say listen we've got a decisive lead and, and they could just jump in front of towers and be aggressive as they want they can even go for a tier three with the ages if they really want to and that's on the nature's profit he's getting right click damage as his orchid is going to be next and that's another good item again against weaver that's going to do very well but yeah, here we go. Another tier 3 push coming in this time from Rock's Kiss. Yeah. They've got the living armor. They've got the sustainable push coming out from the Pugna. And I don't... Like, what, what can what can they do? They have to hope... A flip side has to hope that Rock's Kiss makes some kind of mistake while, while pushing in here. It's going to be impatient. It's going to dive 
tier three towers and not care about buildings. It's but the eclipse I think that they need to do to have a, a good chance at this fight. It's a good eclipse, a good hook shot. They need good ultimates, pretty much, is what it comes down to. Fully casted freezing field. Oh, in comes the hook shot, but it's not a queen of pain. She's just able to blink herself out. The gale will hit in the meantime. It's gonna be the Pugna Ward that's able to kill off the lift. At least he's still able to send his ultimate through, but it doesn't really matter all that much. Look at the health of Rock's Gist, they're still all so high. It will be Weaver that makes it back to base, but there's only two people left alive. The Clockwork who just bought back, who is gonna die again by the looks of it, and then the Weaver who is gonna be trying to save his Clockwork, but not able to do that. That's gonna be four dead, and the Gold Graph below 15k in favor of Rock's Gist. They will move on to the next set of racks because, well actually they can't, because there's uh, no tier 3 towers dead just yet. But this is gonna be Rock's Kiss, maybe even going for tier fours. They could, I think. No, they're gonna back off, I think. They're gonna, they're gonna take this game slow because they don't want to do anything too hasty. Even though all those ults were pretty much wasted except for Eclipse. You saw that was a great chain for us coming through. Yeah. They just don't care. They have like a mech and they're like, yeah, no, that's, no, that's not an issue. So yeah. again, Rock's Kiss playing very well. Heals, Leech Seat, Living Armor, it's all there. Goblock, by the way, is under siege, but... He'll just uh, living armor himself, and looks like he should be able to make himself out of there. In the meantime, Nature's Prophet, his orchid is ready, so they could actually go for him, and they are. They might as well. I mean, he might actually. He will drop from this. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I want to point something out real quick yeah, about that ahead. kill. I thought Cedoy force staffed him forward, and then I realized that that was Weaver's own force staff, and I'm kind of like, hmm. Not that bad of an item, but still, you know. Yeah, you're a weaver. You're kind of like the one that's supposed to be doing the work in this game, other than the Luna, who's not having the best time. So. Interesting first item for sure. Yeah, I that's. I, I'd say that, yeah. Oh, yo, he just dodged the hook shot, and he's gonna be able to take care of this clockwork right here. Actually, Cedoy! Don't be mean! KS. That was, KS a, is that was, a, that was actually a, a kill steal. I guess he's allowed. No, I, mean, I don't know. Well, yeah, but it's still, it's, it's kind of sad. You know, you're a support, you throw out every spell you have on that one hero, and then someone else comes in and takes the last hit. How about that? I'm sure they're yelling at each other in Skype and then, like, laughing or something. They're, they're having a strong game this game, so... Yeah. They'll get away with a couple of gases and another yeah, initiation. Oh, and light. I mean, he's just casting spells, and he'll die from that one. Pugna were doing really a lot of work. Ooh, that four staff. Hey, look at that. Weaver's four staff worked out. They I were guess able to, uh, to. He was able to dodge the Sonic Wave. He still goes down. Little children bouncing around as well. But a GG has been called. And we're going to jump ourselves to the next game, which should be starting like really after just a couple minutes because we are behind schedule. It will be Navi versus Mouse Sports. So stick around for more Star Letter action and hopefully a bit more even game than, game than what we just saw. Of course, you're watching Star Letter. It is still season 8. This is day 19. And this was game 2 of 4. We're gonna have two more games, both of them featuring Mouse, one versus Navi, one versus Sigma. So, uh, well, let's go.